America's most hated kingpin. First of all, I put my teams. Now you are up going around Harlem. Alpo. Yeah. Rich Porter. Uh, listen, let me tell you something. Rich Porter used to listen. I used to see this little nigga Rich Porter all the time because he used to like my cars and stuff. Like yep. with my tree. He's always coming around the dapper down and look at my money and cars and stuff. But I'm looking at this little he's just a kid, right? And then one day, um, one of the kids from Dapper Dan comes up and he says, um, Richard is dead. Yeah. And I thought he died from fucking, like, got sick or something. I didn't know he's such a kid. I didn't know he's no fucking drug dealer. He's no kingpin. Right. He's just a little baby. <laughs> right. He's a little baby. I don't even look Payton at him. for my favorite movie all the time, he's, he's a little child. Right, right. He's a big drug dealer. He used to be around me all the time. He used to never say a word. He's looking at me. What did that do? Everything. 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 You know, and it's it's everything. things that we <laughs> we could say we done crazy things back right. in our days, but he's done a lot. It's a guy, yeah. It's he a died? guy in there. He died? I don't know if he died. I seen, but I don't know. That's a clean street. Whoa, no potholes. It's like, yo, this shit just got paved. Fresh yellow lines. Where was this at? Nah, he came from nah, down there. The car nah. just came. I never seen a rule like this in real life, bro. This shit is shocking. Like, what? Like, it's just... Yo, that's crazy. Like, where the fuck do our tax money goes to? Because I hit potholes everywhere I go, bro. Like, y'all can't feel the shits? Should be me tight, bro. Patrick Douglas, 147. Okay. A dark red pickup truck crashed into parked cars. The driver was shot five times in the chest through the car window and killed. I heard five shots. One and then four, four consecutive shots after that. A mysterious Abraham Rodriguez moved into a modest Louis de Maine apartment sometime in 2015. The 49 year old Puerto Rican just rocked up. Set up a life for a friend at the local. Appreciate that, Zay. Abraham worked at Walmart for a while. Eventually made enough to start his own construction company. He built an image as the construction worker, avid bike rider, and truck enthusiast. Oddly, Mr. Rodriguez had a thirst for life, unlike most men his age. Almost like he spent the last 25 years in a jail cell. He had more money for someone of his occupation, too. Appreciate that, buddy. The luxury cars and the Harley Davidsons rose a lot of eyebrows, but no one asked any questions. Surprisingly, his first time at the local bank. He seemed clueless about anything bank related. Damn, again? The teller asked him. WZ, another Have you bitch. never had a bank account? To which Abraham responded, No, I never needed one. Mm. He enjoyed skydiving. Hey, we're jumping out of an airplane today? Yes. Why are you doing it? Um, it's on my bucket list. Bucket list? Yes. Hey, you ready to check it off? Yes, I am. We're going 13,000 feet and going real fast nice. back towards the earth. Yeah, let's go skydiving, baby. Popping Willie hooping with teenagers in the park. He seemed like good people and a happy-go-lucky out of town. On the weekends, he'd disappear on trips to New York and come back with a truck full of girls and blast music out of his apartment. Mr. Rodriguez loved his trips down to the city more than anything, and they gradually became more frequent. Sometime in 2021, he made the six-hour drive from Lewiston to his native part of Harlem for a Halloween soiree. It would be his last. Damn. I, th I thought people were telling me that he he was... Because, you feel me, we all know. He started talking. He started, um... He was a snitch. He was a rat. He got out. And he was supposed to be in, like, um... What's that shit called? Protective custody or whatever. And, um... People said he moved back to Harlem a couple of months or a, or a year before he passed away. I know he made that trip. In the revels of that Halloween night. Mr. Rodriguez left the party's venue moving. and climbed back in his red Dodge Ram. A strange man walked up to the side of the truck and without hesitation fired five shots into Abraham. Mortally wounded, Abraham drove a short distance away while throwing a few heroin packs out the window as the strength left his body. He then crashed and expired. It was a big news story the next day. Shootings aren't anything rare in Harlem. It made the news because Abraham wasn't really Abraham like he said he was. He was Alberto. Or in the streets, Alpo. Mm -hmm. And boy, did Harlem remember Alpo. Nah. They remembered the Puerto Rican. I think on kick. We... What the fuck? Now 
Nah, you out. This is gonna be tight. <clears throat> but I, I was watching the um the Godfather of Harlem. I, I don't know how I found that show. I, I was looking for a show. I found um that show. I watched the first episode. I was like, yo, we low key need to watch that on kick or something. The fifteen year old. It got a, it got like five or six seasons or something like that. Of grown men. The long lines of crack fiends stretching blocks. I don't know why that reminded me of it. Godfather Harlem Mayor Harlem. Cars. The dapper Dan garments they never seen before. The adrenaline seeker and the tension junkie. And they remembered the man who murdered his friend. Damn. Alberto Martinez was born in Harlem in the 60s. Harlem of old was a gutter of New York. Yeah. And a far cry from modern Harlem. It wasn't too many ways off the block, so a good majority of Harlem's able-bodied men took up profession in hustling. The art of making money appeared out of thin air. By the 80s, Harlem was experiencing a change of the guard with the old hustlers doing decade-long bids and their former errand boys taking over. Alpo came up in this new crop of kingpins right around the time crack hit the block. Crack was an instant sensation in Harlem, along with AZ and Rich. Alpo and company became Nah, I'll be watching AZ's interviews. He did a black TV interview like a year ago. That the shit original fire. bad boys and local celebrities in Harlem. High off the success of his crack empire, Alpo would pop wheelies on Harlem streets, hang with rappers, and had all the girls sprung. A happy-go-lucky team. Alpo never struck anyone as the killing type. To those who knew him in his younger years, Alpo's character could be described as ambitious, harmless, likable charismatic all the naivete would leave young alpo once turf wars broke out and bodies started to drop alpo understood that to maintain power and respect things would have to get ugly but he was only aggressive when he needed to be and rarely got his hands dirty he didn't drink or smoke either alpo was all about the money he wanted it more than anyone i remember people saying um rap used to what the fuck was the shit called? It was like rap. The rappers used to be the one that sell the drugs. Now, nowadays, rappers are the one that take the drugs. Something like that. By 87, the thought. super team that was Alpo, AZ, and Rich had crumbled. In their prime, Rich nah, and Alpo... And they make it a paid and fool part too, bro. That shit better be good, bro. Best friends. But by 87, they weren't as tight. And they gone their separate ways in business. On January 3rd, 1990... Alpo and a friend would pick up Richard for his last ride. A few weeks earlier, Rich had cheated Alpo on the price of some bricks, or so Alpo claimed. Rich didn't have to lie about it, so Alpo lost trust in him after that. Okay. That didn't happen. But I know the thing is, did I, did I kill, did I kill Rich? And uh, yes, yes, I killed Rich. Why did I kill him? It wasn't personal. It was business. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna tell you this, cause Rich. Rich, like I told you, like the story I do with the with the connect yes, and all that. Rich, he was That's lying it. to me about something that there was no reason to lie to me about. And in my mind, I personally, Poe got a good head on his shoulder, bro. I like watching his interviews. Like I, I watch his P Films interview. It just told me that he none of these just if, dumb. If, if this, if this little bit of money can come between what I thought was a was a was a wonderful relationship and a friendship, then. No telling what you might sell me down the line for. And I gave him the opportunity to tell me the truth, not once, but twice. So when I already made the, when I already made the, the uh, when I already came with the plan with my little man and like, yo, if he lied to me, we just going to do what we need to do. Then that's what happened. Do you mind taking me on the tour of exactly of where it happened? How no, it happened? no, no, no. You know, in, in kind of walking to it. Right here where I was meeting Rich that night. And um, I pulled up right here. He got into the van. He got into the van right here. And once he got into the van, I locked, I knew I had to lock, I locked the doors. And as, as, as I was pulling off, I was asking him. Actual food. Because it didn't take long after I pulled off. I was asking him, like, yo, Rich. She didn't order anything. She cooked it. Where did you get that? I had that problem too, though. That, that shit was good because I wanted to make him comfortable. That shit was good as a motherfucker. He's like, I got it from my connect. I said, oh, yeah. So from there, I knew he was lying. I turned to my little man. I gave him the nod. 
once I gave him the knob, my little man spent because he was short, so he could stand up in the van. Next thing you heard was the two gunshots. Damn, how short is he? Standing up in a fucking. I'm guessing it's like. What the fuck is that? Two seater vans with nothing in the back. I'm thinking it's that type of van. Damn. Louis. Bang, bang. Richard slumped over. And it happened. It happened right here. It happened right here. At this light. At this light, it happened. Damn. I'm saying, to, in my mind, I'm saying to my little man, yo, he's dead. He's done it. He just got hit with a 357. Twice. How did you feel? Was you mad? Was you angry? Like, what was going on in your head? It's the regret. I was very, I was very mad. I just uh -oh. killed a nigga that I loved. A nigga that I was getting money with. A nigga that I called my brother. So I pulled over, like, right here. Just threw the, threw the van up on the, as close as I can to the rail. Once, once I pulled over, my little man, he's probably about... Gary's probably like five, three, damn, one something. So I'm trying to stay behind this. I'm trying to stay behind the, the little the man for real. Wheel. I'm trying to stay in the driver's seat just in case we gotta pull over, pull off, and have him go dump the body. But when he went to go try to dump, you know, get Rich out the car, he couldn't. He couldn't pick him up. He couldn't pick him up. Rich was bigger than him, so he couldn't. He couldn't move him to 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 put him in the woods and all that so now i gotta get i had to get out the van to go help him and when i went to go help him richard made a sound damn so that shit startled me oh shit he's still alive so i grabbed the gun i grabbed the gun from my little man and put one in his head and then i had to pick him up i had to pick him up and and dump him in the woods and leave his body. I was able to, you know, get him where he needed to be. And then we jumped back in the we jumped back in the van, and I made sure I didn't skid off or anything like that to leave any kind of tracks. And we uh, and we left. The job was sloppy, and NYPD found the body the very next day. Damn. Alpo played it off like he was shocked and scared about the whole situation. Soon after, Alpo packed up and moved his operation to D.C. Alpo explored and learned DC first, learning the market and networking. Alpo took over after Rayful Edmund went down, DC's head honcho at the time. Alpo had met him already and had his blessing. Murder was the name of the game in DC, so Alpo and his cronies turned more violent. He understood that out there, killers respected killers. So he recruited Wayne Silk Perry as his enforcer, mm. a man who claimed to have killed 100 plus people in the 80s. A problem with Alpo was a problem with- The fuck is he, John Wick? 100 plus people? How the fuck you do that? Silk Perry. I mean, I guess, bro. You gotta kill someone like what? Every week or some shit? How many weeks are in a year? Like 30? 40? Like- Every every month, damn near. Twelve months, ten years, hundred twenty months, and then ten years. Yeah, every month you gotta catch your body. Fifty-two. As his enforcer. Yeah, oh well, God, how's he getting rid of them shits? A man who claimed to have fifty-two killed weeks plus people in the eighties. Ain't know that. A problem with Alpo was a problem with Wayne. Make sure to check out our Wayne Perry video for more on him. Dementio, another famous New York kingpin, established himself in the D.C. drug market after New York started getting less lucrative. As the story goes, Dementio either disrespected or was messing with Alpo's wife, something Alpo couldn't stomach. In a ploy to squash the beef and prevent any bloodshed, Alpo... I don't think they ever told me how many weeks are in a year. ...basketball game for a face-to-face. -face. Dementio. Dementio was a situation where he really disrespected himself and he disrespected I'm other people. It all. And that's why that happened to him. Okay. Yeah. He thought he was he thought he was tougher than what he really was. But I ain't play with them Brooklyn dudes. You ain't play with them? Nah. Nah. I ain't I ain't they were cool. I had some cool ones that came up out of Brooklyn, but I just always remembered as a kid how Brooklyn used to like to rob you and all that. Right, right. How they was always known for for robbing you. So that that, that kinda like stuck with me in my time. But I met some I met some cool getting money dudes out of Brooklyn, without a doubt. Okay. Who hit him? My man that was down with Wayne my, Perry? Not Wayne, 
But the, the kids that was up on the wing, Wayne didn't have, Wayne, too many people knew him as far as right there, so we, we got one of his little soldiers to hit him. But I was shaking his hand, I gave him, I told him, I said, when you see me shaking his hand, I'm not my head. You hit him right, you hit him right. You never feared that one of the bullets would slip off and maybe hit you? No, you know, I didn't care about that. I didn't. I was shaking his hand. It was enough where, because they walked right up on him. I mean, it wasn't no, like, from a distance. As I was shaking his hand, they walked right on him and put the gun right to his forehead and blasted him. That was in the daytime? Yeah, daytime. Bro, then after a basketball game, I just got finished playing basketball in a basketball tournament. So now, did that put the police right on you? Uh, well, they were ready on me, so that just, like, let them know, because later on when they finally arrested me, no they was like, man, you was killing off everybody, so... I'm about to say, if you pay, if you paying someone like a cook to come up to your house and he, he just happens to be male, I guess that's different. But you trying to have jail go to your house and just cook for you? I just let the, that just gave them. They was already looking for me, so that was just something else that they put in their book, like uh, another one. So on November seventh, ninety one, Alpo went down, and Wayne shortly after. Alpo was facing death or life for fourteen murders, Damn. drug dealing. But the okay. feds wanted Wayne just as bad as Alpo. As the traitor he was, it came down to business in the end. It was never personal. Alpo could remember all the murders in detail and became the key witness against Wayne. Now, he didn't just, he didn't just kill him. What he Feds said, magazine. He what the fuck? He stabbed, he stabbed the Wait. Every dimension of the streets? Oh, financially every dimension of the streets. Oh, that's a crazy. Oh. Finally, every dimension of the streets. Oh, yeah. sometimes we couldn't Not get bad, I was trying to... Sometimes we didn't want to carry pistols all the time. We couldn't get into the spots all the time. So we bought some nice switchblades. Right. Some nice sharp doors in case we had to stab somebody, we get up out of there. Right. So he had one of those knives with him. So he stabbed her several times first in the back seat. All in the face, in the <laughs> head, in the body. He stabbed her several times first. Then he shot her like four or five times. Because this was a testified against him, but he beat the case. Okay. But he beat the case. Yeah, so her brains and her brains and everything was splattered all in the back seat. Wayne stayed solid and never snitched on anyone. In the end, Wayne got five life sentences and Alpo 35 years. Both at ADX Florence. Hey, I'm, I'm just broken. Wayne stayed solid and never snitched on anyone. Yeah. In the end, Wayne got five life sentences. Damn. And Alpo 35 years. Damn. Both at ADX Florence, home of America's least desirables. The party that was Alpo's first 25 years of life in the free world was over. His story went something like this. A young hustler grew into a millionaire kingpin, murdered his friend, cheated, and publicly executed a defenseless man, and ratted on a trusted partner. He left a legacy no one could respect, not even hardened thugs. While Alpo did his 35-year bid, the world changed, and he became hood famous through bootleg paid in full DVDs and then forgotten altogether as the years went by. Alpo got out in 2015 after doing 25 years, settled in Lewiston under the Witness Protection Program, and kept himself busy till he got that itch to visit his old stomping grounds again. Something deep in his psyche needed attention in Harlem. The government claims witness protection has a 100% success rate if you don't break the rules, but Alpo was never meant for a square type of life. When the mysterious sighting started in Harlem, Alpo was like a mythical creature. No one could believe it was actually him. And uh, Alpo, I just recently seen him. He came to my show at the Apollo. Mm -hmm. I had a big show at the Apollo with Keith Sweat and everybody. And he came to the backstage. I was like, yo, it's a ghost. Right, like, right, right. It's like seeing a ghost, but, you know, seeing your friend from way back. I wonder how he know. feels about himself. The news outlets jumped on Alpo's story real fast when his corpse was identified. The name had faded from memory, but a good few still remember his glory days. Regardless, Alpo's name had an unwashable stain on it. Rat, traitor, double dealer, any word along those lines. The internet flooded with conspiracy theories of who did it, but why seemed obvious to many. Come up is for a life of dirty deeds. In the consensus, no one felt bad for Buddy. The killer ran off into the dark that night, and no one saw who did it either. The chase was on for the NYPD and the Instagram detectives. On his last day, Alpo was on the phone discussing a movie deal with his old partner, AZ, a chance to make some much-needed bread. 
he was killed the morning of the movie deal being signed. In February 2022, Shaquem Parker was arrested for the murder while already in a Rikers Island cell on a gun charge. And sometimes a chance to make some much needed bread. He was killed the morning of the movie deal being signed. Damn. In February 2022. What the fuck? On his last day, Alpo was on the phone discussing a movie deal with his old partner, AZ. A chance to make some much needed bread. Damn, he AZ was killed the morning of the movie deal being signed. In February 2022, Shaquem Parker was arrested for the murder while already in a Rikers Island cell on a gun charge. Sometime the summer before Alpo brushed past Parker recklessly in a way that implied disrespect and by whatever twisted code Shaquem lived by, that meant Alpo had to die. Whether he knew Alpo before or how he tracked him down to that party has never been revealed. But when Shaquem hit Alpo five times that Halloween night, he avenged all the people Alpo hurt and apparently made a lot of people's weekend too. Back in Lewiston, they couldn't believe it. His brutal demise and that Abraham was a mass murdering kingpin. Al his brutal demise. He was the nicest neighbor. He was always polite, nice with the dog. Murdering. Hey, Abraham got killed. What? Kingpin. Alpo could have lived out a quiet, honest life up in Maine. That was never how his story was meant to end. Yeah. 